your intros are like my favorite part because you never tell me what you're gonna do when we come out of oh. that break. So oh Texas Tech, you guys are too much, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're here. It is Orange Buzz Live. It is the Orange Buzz post game show brought to you by the Lowy Law Firm. <laughs> 57 <laughs> to 7. They went for it on fourth down a couple of times. Arch Manning's throwing the football. They shoved a big old shit sandwich inside the mouth of everybody from Lubbock, Texas. And then they mashed the mouth real hard and made them taste it real good. Woo! Uh, Enjoy yourselves tonight, Longhorn fans. As you come into the Specs chat, we will take all of your Super Chats. We will read them. We will laugh at tech fans. I don't think they're going to be in my mentions anytime soon. But go ahead, tech fans. Go ahead. Because I am going to take and make gifts out of everything that happened in the fourth quarter. Fourth down, going for it. Trey Wisner flipping into the end zone. If a tech fan comes near you ever, ever, ever again, the ammunition that Texas has given Texas fans um, is limitless. I'm Jeff Ketchum. That is Jason Sukumel. Jason, a game took place. Barely. Dropped in weirdly their most dominant performance of the season, and yet you could still nitpick the hell out of it because the offense wasn't great for some of the night. It could have been 70, 80. I don't know. It could have. On a night where Jet Bush and Burt Auburn are your game MVPs, uh, it was a strange one, but absolutely emphatic. And you leave. I called for an ass kicking. If there was any school on this schedule, Jason, that warranted an absolute butt kicking in the final game in of this series in the Big 12, it was tech. I didn't see this quite coming. Well, you kind of did. You said on our prediction show that you thought this was way more emphatic than even oh, I thought. Yeah, but you were the only one who had it uh, even remotely a blowout. I had forty four thirteen, and I feel like I missed it by a mile. You well, you weren't that far off, honestly. But it, I think the reason maybe you feel that way, like you said, fifty seven to seven, it feels like it could have been seventy seven to seven. Honestly, I mean. Like you said, I'm not. We're not going to nitpick too much, but I mean, Texas had some little bit of sloppiness early in the game. You know, if you'd have told me Quinn Ewers threw for one 196 yards, one touchdown, one interception, and Texas scored 57, I'd have I'd have told you you're crazy. I'd have said you're absolutely crazy. But Texas rushes for 302 yards. Jaden Blue, Savion Red, Quinn Wisner are your three leading rushers in the game. Just a dominant performance. I mean, Texas. Uh, did really well on special. They really, they controlled the game in every way possible. Taj Brooks was Taj Brooks. He went for a 95. Okay. But they, they kept him in check. Tech couldn't throw the ball. Texas owned the line of scrimmage in the passing game. They, they had Morton running for his life. Um, You know, special teams, they won offensively. Texas ran the ball. Well, didn't throw it around the field, but didn't really need to. I mean, really, they just dominated this game in every single way possible. Um, it's such a sweet game, like for for the tried and true Texas fans that are watching this video. I mean, what better way to end the regular season? Okay, you clinch the spot in the Big 12 championship. You blow out the opponents. You're kind of just celebrating almost through the whole game or through most of the game. And you're doing it against a team who talked a lot of shit. Their coach has been – and I listen, I like Joey McGuire. I will confess. I – I, I knew him a little bit when he was a head coach in high school. So I've always liked Joey McGuire. And I thought he and Sark had a couple of nice moments that looked like before the game and after the game. But, you know, you shove it down the Big 12 commissioner's throat. You shove it down uh, some mouthy Texas Tech people's throat. So um, couldn't go, couldn't have gone much better for a Friday night for Texas. Now you get the whole weekend to enjoy it. Too. Oh, yeah. Sunday and Sunday. yeah. I mean, just enjoy. Honestly, it's a holiday weekend. Take the next couple of days, kick your feet up, and just enjoy the fact it's an 11 and 1 Texas team. They won all the games, really, they were supposed to win this year. Like, this has forever been a program that at times has stubbed its toes in the occasional game, just like this. 
this completes an 11-1 season. You're in the Big 12 championship game, and other than a last-minute loss to Oklahoma, you damn near run the entire regular season schedule off the table. Uh, kudos to Steve Sarkeesian, his coaching staff, and the players on this team. They deserve a big attaboy, not just for tonight, but there, I see someone has a like a 30,000-foot question here. Uh, from 30,000 feet, it's a hell of a win. It's probably the most emphatic statement they've made all season long. Uh, uh, the your mark and, and the fact that they they put the Big 12 commissioner on uh, Godzilla Tron at the end of the game and show his remarks. And then you see the team's response to them playing the remarks where the, the entire team was basically on the field. Chad described it as uh, Lionel Richie's all night long video. It did. It just looked like there's random people <laughs> dancing on the field. Um, but I tell you what, I, I will remember the scene of the end of this game for a long, long time. Let's get some super chats. Uh, Justin leads us off. Uh, finally got to see all gas, no brakes. Justin, they were up 50 to seven and they were throwing the ball on fourth down <laughs> in the last drive of the game. That was some cold, cold blooded shit is what we watched. John Lynch says for $10. Thank you very much, John. Any shot this affects Micah's thought process approaching signing day? I don't think so, but if there was ever anything that was going to, it would be a night like tonight. But Micah seems pretty locked in. He's acted like he's locked in. He said he's locked in. He's going to graduate early. Um, you know, a game like this can do a lot, but, uh, you know, My Micah. Depending on what happens with the AM hire, this could, but not the way maybe you think, John. I mean, if AM were to hire Ryan Day, like maybe. You know, something like that, but I don't know, John. I just think Micah probably knows. All right, this is who this is what I'm signing up for. Mid-tier mediocre football. Uh Jake says for a dollar ninety-nine, your mark, see the video, or did he leave early? Was he for sure there tonight? I know they never showed him on camera that I can remember seeing. Well, and that you know what a use the word pussy but that, that's a what a, what a wimpy move if he didn't show up after he said he's going to be there and then you know show but you know what he'll yeah. obviously be at the game next weekend so just make him hand that trophy to well, you and i don't know for sure that he wasn't there i'm just saying i don't You're right he might have been but uh i didn't hear anybody or i never saw him like you said i didn't see any mention of it on twitter or from anwar or anybody at the game so sean says can't complain about giving up a little over 200 total yards sean the defense was great tonight mm. Great. I thought for sure Morton would go out and throw the ball. Or, you know, I thought Texas would win, but I thought he'd put up big throwing numbers just because every – you know, I did I did a study or not a st study, but I looked at some stats catch. If you looked at the last, I think it was four games or five games, Texas's pass defense was the second to worst ranked pass defense in the country coming into the night in terms of yards giving up, giving up per game. And they go out there tonight and hold Texas Tech to 88 yards passing. In my wildest dreams, I didn't see that coming. The coverage was, I mean, listen, they, they had Morton running for his life more times than not, but I thought the coverage, man, they were, there was rarely a time when Tech had a receiver that had more than like a foot of distance between uh, the receiver and the Texas defensive back. That the, the pass coverage from that secondary was phenomenal all night. Well, that's 88 yards on 36 attempts. Incredible. Yeah, 56.6 so, passer rating for more than three interceptions, by the way. Yeah. And that's not on the NFL measuring. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> that's bad on the NFL, but it's really bad in college football. Uh, moving along in the Super Chats, thank you very much. James for 1999. James, if I had a bell, I'd ring it. I'm so – I think I'm going to read this for you. You might be drunk. I'm so <laughs> damn happy. Man. Very limited time sample, but I was impressed with Arch. So was I. Uh, attaboy, Trey Wisner, pay your dues. Can't disagree with any of it, James. Uh, you know, I thought Arch – listen, man, Arch, I mean, he had a couple of nice balls, but uh, – <laughs> rephrase that. I mean, a couple of nice throws. But, uh, but um, you know, he showed off. We've all heard about the athleticism. We've reported on his athleticism and scrimmages and things. You got to – 
a glimpse of it tonight, and that's appealing, man. When you've got a quarterback who can move like that and get the corner, and you, you saw him run for a couple, a run for a first down. So, uh, yeah, you know, good good performance by Arch and a limited sample size, you know, but uh, certainly a nice showing in his first time to take the field. Overnight Lover says, uh, 30,000 foot view from the sky. Tom Herman went to the Big 12 championship and had a terrible season the following year. What should make us believe this won't happen again next year? Are you a tech? Wait, hold on. What kind of question is that? Overnight oh, Lover. <laughs> In the, in the moments after this game ends, that's what you're going to ask. In the very aftermath of 57-7? to 7, hey, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a fair, it's a fair question. The timing of it sucks, overweight lover. But, you know, Texas is losing a lot of talent uh, from next or from this roster going into next year. They're going to the SEC. It's not going to be easy sledding. But, hey, my advice, my man, enjoy this win tonight, and we'll worry about that next offseason. I, I would say this, you know, just – I mean, it's going to be a very difficult schedule next year. We don't even know what the roster is going to look like. I mean, we think we may have an idea of that. Um, by the way, if I'm not mistaken, Herman went eight and five and finished in the top 25 the next year. I mean, that would be a disappointing season next year. If Texas doesn't make the playoff next year as it expands to 12, it's going to forever be disappointing in every season moving forward if you can't get into the playoff, but you know, relatively speaking, eight and five in a bowl win. Um, it's, if that's terrible, I don't know that I would say terrible. I would nitpick you. It wasn't good though. And you know, Texas could win eight games next year. It's, it's, there's a lot to be left to it's that. We just don't know what the full scope of this roster is going to look like overweight. Come on now. The, the timing of that. People will jump in and think that we're like hating. <laughs> what are Ketch and Sukumel talking about? Uh, guys, if you just joined in, that had nothing to do with us. Uh, trying to trying to get people to leave the show, overweight. Uh, Angry Hammer says, here's my money to buy a serving of Crow for my Jet Bush hate. He was a dude this season. He was a dude tonight. Yeah, Jason, but forget about well, we'll never be able to forget about one of the most freakish touchdowns I have ever seen in all the years that I've covered Texas football. The ball going off the running back shoe into the air and Jim Jet Bush turning into an uber athletic ball hawk. How about that attempt at the tackle by the quarterback? What the hell was that? I was like, oh my gosh, dude. I think but, he'd been banged up a little bit, but I was like, you got at least like fall on the ground in front of him or something. Forget right? about the touchdown for a second. His sack mm. where he comes, he converts out of one of the best spin moves I've seen all year by a Texas pass rusher that he was able to so quickly convert from spin to tackle was one of the single best pass rushing moments. we've. I joked, like, what's Colin Simmons got on Jet Bush? <laughs> He had himself a night, and it wasn't just the touchdown, which was kind of flukish. Um, you know, I'm going to say I got a, a good buddy of mine in the high school coaching ranks. He's a, a defensive coordinator. He's a guy whose opinion I really trust. He goes to a lot of Texas practices and coaching clinics and things, and I remember him telling me, he goes, man, everybody piles on Jet Bush. He goes, that dude's a good player. He goes, he's a guy that I'm telling you, like in an Ohio State type defense, he'd be a solid player for them. This is like two years ago. And, you know, I, I think people probably talk a little more trash on Jet for whatever reason than they should. He's a, a former walk on. So, you know, what a great moment for him. What a great performance for him uh, tonight. The, the pick six was amazing. The sack was incredible. So, um, kudos to my buddy, tip of the cap. I always really respect his opinion and even more so now. Yeah. By the way, I'm fascinated to hear what Sark says about why Arch got the call tonight instead of Malik. I was well, just someone said they said on the board you, you were doing your show. You probably um, sadly people were crapping on Malik, of course, which I just don't understand it, Texas fans. But um, you know, be better than that. So what some people were saying, and I didn't see it. Maybe maybe they were at the game, but um, on the I think it was the long kick return that Texas Tech had. He was tackled out of bounds and tackled into Malik. And he did go into the injury tent for a, a bit. 
and there's speculation, maybe like a, I don't know if it was concussion or what. Um, so, you know, I don't know this again, this is what I was reading on orange bloods, but a couple different people said the same thing. So, um, I don't know. Cause then Malik was not seen on the sidelines after Interesting. that. Well, like I yeah. said, it'll be interesting to see what, when, uh, Anwar joins us probably in about, what, what do we got? We've been going for nine minutes. Who the hell knows? It sometimes takes a while depending on how many, I mean, it's senior night. It might be a while before we see Anwar because they got to do the victory laps and, mm -hmm. You know, I would imagine Sarkeesian is going to hang out a little bit and enjoy. I mean, by the way, we said it at the end of the, by the way, Caesar, I don't know what your question is, uh, but I'll be on the lookout for a comment and I'll come back to you. I was surprised at the handshake at midfield. Joey McGuire, it was a double handshake with it. It was a double hug with a handshake and multiple pats on the chest. Um, it wasn't just like a quick little bro hug. It was a, That's what I'm saying. Like there was a lot to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I wondered, we joked, would we see the Belichick hug? It was a lot more than that. Um, but boy, 57 to 7, it was all it was the most all gas, no breaks we've seen from Texas, where even you know, normally when a guy like Manning gets in there late in the game, it's just handing the ball off. They ran, went for it twice on fourth down uh, on the way to a touchdown drive that made it 57-7. to seven. <clears throat> Man, um, it, it <laughs> I enjoyed it. I'll just simply leave it at that. Uh, Caden says, your mark can smooch my dimples. Tech <laughs> just got arched. Let's. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to see Ketch's old face for the second oh, week in a row. <laughs> I know. Boy. All you got to do is ask. I'm a cheap date for $1.99. Stephen Ortiz says, will we jump Oregon in the CFP poll because of this game? No. Now, and I was looking just before we went, Oregon was up 31 to, to 7 against, I think, number 15th ranked Oregon State. So Oregon did probably what it needed to do, hold, hold on its position. That being said, Oregon beats the same Texas Tech team by eight points is all. It so. doesn't matter because next week Oregon's going to play Washington. Yeah. So, Stephen, well, if Oregon had lost tonight, that would have mattered because then – Well, or if Washington loses in the Apple Cup and then they beat Oregon next week, then maybe Washington is the one lost team that gets boxed out. Steven, the Fox crew, I think they said it early in the game when they went with a full screen graphic, and I think it's as simple as this. Florida State has to lose, and you want to root for Georgia. You just want – hey, and you'll take an Auburn win tomorrow as well, but you need Alabama to lose. You need Florida State to lose, and nothing else matters. You don't have to worry about what happens in the Big Ten. You don't have to worry about the Pac – the Pac-12 is going to get a team. Unless, again, Washington loses tomorrow, and then they were to turn around and beat Oregon. I'll tell you what, though. If Washington were to beat Oregon twice in the same season, who knows? Maybe even then the Pac-12 would still get a spot. It's real simple. Florida State has to lose. And then you're much better off with Georgia just taking care of business. And then Texas can take care of their business. Before we get back to the Super Chats, and Brian, I'll get to yours next. This was a game that from an injury standpoint seemed really scary. At one point, I thought Xavier Worthy was D O N E done, maybe for the rest of the year, uh, maybe like on two separate occasions. When he gets rolled up, Jason, underneath, that was bad looking. Yeah, I audibly like just made an oh, like, like a ah uh, kind of a sound. I thought that was it for him. We, I, I even mentioned that you know, normally when you see the guys get rolled up on, it's usually a big guy rolling on somebody's body on a knee or an ankle. It's rare that we see somebody with the kind of momentum of the Oklahoma state player that rolls under Xavier worthy. It wasn't quite the mass, but the, the impact at the back of the leg just looked awful. We saw. I remember, Hey, real quick before you talk about the other ones, I want to say, I think it was Whittington when we had him uh, with as an orange bloods NIL guy. I want to 
forget like he described worthy as having like rubber band legs or something like that because he was so like he just can't get a hold of him he was talking about trying to tackle him so i guess oh to be like whatever 19 20 years old and young and flexible again because my goodness i think my knee hurt just watching that but to uh to be able to come back from that in a, in a couple of plays later was incredible but yeah you were going to say i mean there were some several other injuries too that uh we're worrisome for for a bit, but they also. Most By the way, your mark was there tonight. Was he? Okay. All right. I'm looking at uh, Texas Tech's bar stool had video of him walking on the field before the game. How long was he there? Was he around for the end of the game? Like, I don't know, but he was definitely there, uh, walking on the field about four hours or about an hour before the game. Um, a few more super chats, and we'll be caught up temporarily. Brian says, how sweet was that? It was real sweet. If we're, Brian, it was it was real sweet. I changed SEC right chanted, along. Chanted, I think he means it, right? Yeah, chanted, I think is what he meant. Oh, I chanted SEC. Oh, your first official SEC chant, huh? Uh, right along with the fans in the stadium. A lot of people owe Sark an apology. Hook them. Um, I thought that was a fun moment when the stands were chanting SEC at the end. Well, of the it's, it's right on brand, right? Like. That's exactly what an SEC school does. Uh, I hope SEC fans enjoyed that. Texas is almost one of you guys. Uh, not yet, but I think you're going to find that Texas fans like the SEC, everything about it, more than they pretended not to when Texas A&M joined the conference in 2012. There was a lot of Texas acting like they were above the SEC. Deep down, they've been wanting to chant SEC for years now, and tonight they let it flow. Jordan says for four ninety nine, I've never been such a Florida Gators fan as I am right now. Let's go Gators! Da, 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 da. Go Gators! I could see that game being competitive. It's in Gainesville tomorrow, right? Um, it would is uh, Florida State six and a half point favorites. It's tomorrow night, so I had a sneaky suspicion that's going to be a close game. Yeah. I I think the Oklahoma State game tomorrow could get weird. And if they lose, Oklahoma's in. And then you've got a Texas OU rematch. It, it's really strange as Texas has gotten closer to achieving, you know, the Big 12 championship bid, which they're in the Big 12 championship game now. There has been very little in the last couple of weeks – but what if it's OU? There's been a lot of it. We wish it was OU because it would, you know, I think be better from a national attention standpoint. I still think Oklahoma State wins tomorrow, right? Because they've got BYU or Houston. Who are they? BYU have? in Stillwater, man. I, I just don't see that game being that. Crazy. I don't either. But it's a Oklahoma State team that has lost by a combined. Yeah. Some 68 points this year to South Alabama and Central Florida. So yeah. anything's possible with Oklahoma State. This, I mean, they just lost by six touchdowns a couple of weeks ago. Uh, to, granted, a Central Florida team that finished the season actually playing pretty decent football and certainly wasn't worst team in the Big 12 in its year one. Um, speaking of your mark, we got a VPC soap company says for four ninety nine, how pissed off will you, your mark be if o Oakey Light loses <laughs> and it's Texas OU? I think you, you just answered your own question. There's no amount, I think, of sadness that you can quantify that would wipe away the embarrassment of a Texas OU Big 12 championship given – you know, and the, look, I would say this. The Big 12 is going to be fine. They will be competing for, like, third best conference. And in a world where the conferences have been shrinking and the Pac-12 is two teams, and the Big 12 is going to be fine. What do we got? What did I miss? Ryan's super chat. You may want to bump that one right now. <laughs> okay. Let me see what we got going on. Whoa, my man Ryan Crow. <laughs> From the Texas Card House. Oh, sorry. Okay, Ryan, I didn't recognize him. All right. He must have won some hands tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Ryan, I want to hear from you soon. Just touch base with me. Buy or sell. 
Texas makes the playoff. Playhouse off. Play. I'm guessing playoff is playoff. What just, Hey, well, kind of circling back to what you were just talking about. If you're a Texas fan, you don't I think you'd rather see Oklahoma in that game. Um, I think Oklahoma State's easier to win, but Oklahoma's going to be ranked higher, and then you can possibly avenge that loss. So that way, if it comes down to it and it's everybody's torn between Texas and Oregon or Texas and Alabama, you can say, hey, Texas has one loss, but they avenged that loss. So if you're a Texas fan, I think you need to be rooting really hard for BYU tomorrow. I don't think it'll happen. Oh, no, 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 no. See, I'll agree. I'll disagree. No good thing ever comes from OU success. I don't disagree uh, with Jason. about playoff chances for Texas. Beating Oklahoma State and winning the Big 12 by any means. OU's a more dangerous team than they Oklahoma are. State. Yeah, I agree with that. I know I totally agree with that. I'm not saying you should root for them. For, for, it'll be I harder to win. You said they should root well, for on. Oklahoma. I'm saying it'll be harder to win the Big 12 championship if you're playing Oklahoma. But it'll be if you pull it off, it'll increase your chances of getting. Yeah, into I don't know. I think, I, I think all of the dynamics remain the same. You need Florida state to lose and you need to root for Georgia to just take care of the Alabama thing. And then there's literally nothing in your way. If those two things if happen, if Alabama beats Georgia, then that throws a whole wrench in the things. Texas beating out, beating uh, Oklahoma and I don't think they're loss. getting in if Alabama beats Georgia. I don't know, man. I don't like, think Georgia is dropping the five. I don't know how the committee is going to vote, but I, you know, watching the um, the, was it the Tuesday night show on ESPN. I mean, hell, a lot of them had Texas in over a one-loss Georgia team. I, I'm going to have to see it to believe it. I mean, that would just be complete chaos. I don't know, but I do think Texas would have a better argument if they beat Oklahoma versus beating Oklahoma State. Yeah, the weird thing, uh, you're not wrong about that. You're not like. Beating Oklahoma is a better resume. I just described Oklahoma State as a team that lost by 68 to South Alabama and mm-hmm. Central Florida. You're not wrong. I just don't know that it changes the dynamics, but it does put Texas in a better position of, you know, I just wonder if you end up finishing fifth. If the things that you need to happen don't happen, you finish as a super strong fifth, uh, which is, you know, I don't, I don't know how that – look – if Texas gets a rematch against Oklahoma, wins the Big 12, gets left out of the playoff, but then goes and destroys somebody in a bowl game and finishes no worse than top five this season, and it's, it's an incredible year. Um, and Texas is obviously knocking on the door really, really close. Ryan, you're asking for $200. Do they make it? I'm going to say sell because I, I think Florida State is going to handle its business when it's all said and done, that's just my opinion. But I certainly think a number of things could look a lot of rivalry games taking place. It's not crazy that Washington could lose to Washington state. I don't think that's going to happen, but you know, stay tuned tomorrow. We still haven't seen a crazy thing. That's the other thing, Jason, the one year Texas is 11 and (laughs) one and, and all it needs is one team to lose a game, they haven't had anybody lose in a month. I, I I give all of the teams in this spot through right now, because look, they got to survive games tomorrow, but we've gone almost the entire month of November and not one team in the top eight has dropped a game. It is unheard of, unheard of. They said on TV tonight, it's only happened one other time. Um, people in the chat are asking about Georgia's schedule. They did beat Missouri, ranked number 12. They beat Ole Miss consecutive weeks, ranked number nine. Tennessee, ranked number 18 on the road. So, And they're plowing teams. They're beating yeah, exactly. so, the way Texas know, beat Tech tonight every week. Pretty close, yeah. They, I mean, they beat Ole Miss, number nine ranked Ole Miss, 52 to 17. So, well, And here's the um, thing about Georgia. They're the two-time defending champions, and mm-hmm. they're and the, the thing that would hurt Texas, I That's, think, potentially – is that Georgia has emerged as the no three weeks ago, Ohio State was number one. Three weeks later, nobody's on the same level as Georgia. And that's Georgia's gonna count. That means they've got in the two consecutive national championships. I just have a fear if Alabama beats them, that's gonna come into play. That the committee is gonna take that into account. I the think. thing is, we did so there's a precedent like last year, TCU 
loses the championship game and they still get in, there's a precedent to saying, you know what, let's not punish a team that we think is one of the four best teams in the country. Let's not punish them for the conference championship. The thing about Georgia would be they'll go into next week and the committee will think that Georgia is the no doubt about it best team in the country. If they were to lose in the SEC championship, you've got to convince yourself that the committee is going to take the team that they think is by far and away the number one team from six days ago and send them to fifth? I, yeah. I don't know that that's going to – I'm not saying it won't happen. I'm just saying when you say it out loud, it wouldn't shock me if the committee said there's no way we're taking – because here's what, here's what the committee won't do on the day of the announcement. They're not going to say we think we – left the best team in the country out of the tournament. They're not going to do that. They're not going to say these are, you know, they lost when they lost and now they're out. But deep down, we think Georgia at five is really the number one team in the country. They're not going to do that. Just root for Georgia. Just that's, have the, them. that's a simple answer, but Just I don't know, man. Georgia lost to Alabama. Texas beat Alabama in Al at Alabama. I mean, I don't know what the committee would do, but you're right. Just root for Georgia so that's not an issue. And I know that answer, the, when in doubt, the SEC gets the benefit of the doubt, in my yeah. opinion. By the way, thank you for that, Ryan. You got like a lot of – I hope we hope we did you justice. You took over the show, but it warranted it. Uh, Pete, George, it's not a super chat, but Pete, I will not be chugging a beer. I don't have any beer in my house tonight. But uh, I what? Promise, I know if te if Texas wins, I drank it all. Drank last it all last night. <laughs> <laughs> if Texas wins. No, I didn't say anything about the the Evan Williams up in my uh, my pantry. I got a little bourbon up there. But if Texas wins next week, Pete, I'll be prepared. I'll chug a chug a beer for you. I might right. even do that. And I haven't had a beer since I was 21 years old. <laughs> uh, Jordan says, I've never been such a Florida Gators fan as I am right now. Let's go Gators. I think I got that one earlier. But yeah, Jordan. Dun, 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 dun. Go Gators. Uh, boy, next week looks so much different. Let me just stop for a second. I'll get to VPC. We done. We did this one too. Yeah, I don't know why that's up there. I'll take that one down too. Um, it's next week. Will feel so much different if you go into the game knowing that if you win, you're in. Hmm. It reminds me of, I mean, 2001 Colorado. That was, let me tell you what, before the Big 12 championship game in 2001, I was out in the parking lot taking shots and, 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 and having a pretty great time with some friends and Cedric Benson's mom. Like Cedric Benson's mom and my crew, we just kind of went around and we all got treated like kings and queens and like just had a great, it was like, it was a party. And then was it Tennessee that lost? There was a couple teams that lost. I well, the SEC game happens, though. Yeah. And the outcome of whether it was like Florida beating Tennessee or whatever it was that happened that night changed the entire vibe of the stadium. It went from let's have a party to holy shit. If we win, we're going to play in the national championship game against Miami. And everybody's assholes tightened up like a pack of quarters. And, you know, the little rolls of quarters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I get the visual. <laughs> it, well, it occurred to me, like, in 2023, maybe the youngins out there have never had a roll of quarters in their hands before. Um, and then you think about the tension and the stress of Sims makes the big turnovers. And, mm. and then the boo, you know, the boos. Because everybody was like, we're going to, we, all we got to do is win this game. And you're, so I can't help but remember the way the anxiety changed that game. And I'm not saying, hey, Florida State loses tomorrow. The best thing in the world is Texas goes into the Big 12 championship game with some real leverage, right? Like one of the things that it needs to be done is done. But boy, the pressure of a, of a Big 12 championship game 
with that actually on the line on top of it instead of, well, if you win and some things happen, I'm just telling you guys. I think it'd be good for Texas, and let me tell you why. I think Ewers, I think Sark, those two handle those kind of situations pretty well. They're pretty even keel guys. And this team, I mean, think about tonight. It was a win and you're in situation. The next biggest game, Alabama. It wasn't a win and you're in, obviously, but it was the games where Texas just has the most on the line. Those are their two best performances by far. I get it after Oklahoma, technically every game, like Sark said, every game was a must win, but not really. You know, but tonight in that Alabama game, when Texas knows they've got so much at stake, they just come out with a different mindset, man. I'm I mean, not telling you they won't handle it well. I'm telling you there will it will be a different type of pressure that's on your shoulders that this Texas team hasn't quite had to deal with. It's been one of the things about one of the good things for Texas about being seventh is I think it's just allowed them to play the schedule knowing we can't do anything about some of these other teams losing, but the moment that it's like a week actually control our own destiny to get to the playoffs. I think, you'll probably find out a little bit like what Florida state's been feeling when, when the injury occurs last week, there was a real sense of, Holy shit, this is about to get away from us. And we're down 13 to nothing. And you know, I'm, I'm just curious to see how it all plays out when it's all said and done. Wesley says for 1999, don't shit run through Lubbock. (laughs) I would say DeSoto former. No, that's what JT Sanders said that on Twitter. What's that? Sanders said that on Twitter. I think that's what he's referencing. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, (laughs) This Texas team, real salty in their post-game social media. Right while they're sitting at their locker, dude. Because he posted that like it wasn't too long after the game was over. So he must be sitting at his locker. They don't waste any time. Hey, these dudes were feeling the same thing I was, which is of all the teams that needed an ass kicking, this was one of them. Um Jay Harbo seven says stadium was insane. It was loud. It was awesome. Great to be a Longhorn. Finally, four complete quarters. Yeah, man. You know, when I do my post game notes or my notes, I'm kind of writing them as the game's going along. So you almost read them mostly chronologically. But um, I put like one of my notes was like, what a raucous environment, like just from the, the opening snap. And then I had to go back and be like, what the, what am I talking about? What a raucous environment all the way till the, the end of the game. I mean, listen, I'm watching on TV, but you can just feel the energy almost through the television. I can imagine uh, being the, for those of you know, we're at the game and on work and talk about that, but uh, it just seemed like an incredible environment from start all the way to finish. Usually that stuff kind of peters off, especially in a blowout game, but that was a, uh, okay, there we go. But that was a, a crazy environment all the way through. So. Texas football coach, Sar- Steve Sarkeesian said Malik Murphy got hit on the sidelines and hurt his non-throwing shoulder during Keelan Robinson's return, said it was just an unfortunate injury. Okay. And kind of people said he was pissed. And, of course, people are jumping to conclusions like he was throwing a tantrum. No, I think he was pissed that he was injured and he couldn't go into the game. So. No, and, I mean, that's a little ominous in the sense that the, the next statement wasn't, but we think he'll be all right next week. You know, this was precautionary to say it was just an unfortunate injury. And he's also describing it as an injury as opposed to he just got hurt on it. You know what I mean? Like something to keep an eye you know, on. Unfortunate meaning like just dumb, bad luck. I mean, no, I know, but I, I'm more focused on the word injury than I am unfortunate because, you know, it's not like they, it was precautionary and he could have played and they held him back. It sounds like there's something – Something that happened there, and obviously we'll have to keep an eye on it moving forward. Uh, we'll keep going through the Super Chats and try to knock them out. Uh, we got that one. It's weird. These things keep popping up, and then they pop down. And uh, Dark Borg says, no good ever comes from rooting for OU. Shame on you, Suk. Shame on you. Dark Borg, I, I, you're right. Jason's, Jason, Jason, hey, it's 11.13 at night on the Friday after a holiday. He drank all the beer in his house. <laughs> all he's got is hard liquor yet left. Just it, He understands now, Dark Borg. He does. <laughs> I'm a little edgy. Sorry. Sorry, Dark Borg. But he also is telling the truth, which is 
the single greatest thing that could occur for the Texas resume would be to face OU in the championship game. Ah, they can just not be there and Texas can beat Oklahoma State and we'll find a way to get all through that with extreme happiness. Uh, South End Zone Queen, see y'all next weekend. Archmania was real in the stadium, 11-1. and one. I'm going to ask this on the board. Was there a Cedric Benson type buzz? The moment, you know, I, I don't know if you remember it, Jason, but I guess mm-hmm. oh, yeah. it opened up oh, with like New Mexico State or whatever it was. Yeah. And there was like this buzz leading up to before he got into the game. And then every time he rushed the ball in the fourth quarter and that first performance as a freshman the stadium was just electric well when you're watching doing your watch along you probably don't have the audio on of the television yeah. right you do not i don't so, yeah well they said on tv like you know they're sitting there talking about all the big 12 or uh, the college football playoff scenarios and all of a sudden it even caught them by surprise this huge ovation from the crowd they were like other than the your mark thing that, that happened after that they said that was maybe the biggest ovation of the night. And they, it kind of caught them by surprise. They look out and it's like, oh, it's Arch Manning took the field. So I think it kind of was Cedric Best, Benson-esque just from watching it on television. You could hear the roar of the crowd. And obviously it was – I can't Arch. wait to get Anwar in here to kind of get a, a real sense of painting the picture of the locker room, the sidelines, the Arch stuff, uh, a really unique night, not just in this season. Um, what do we got going on here from Chris? Uh, the best our secondary has played all year. No space to the receivers. Been waiting on that. Thoughts on why Arch got action instead of Malik. We just answered that. If Quinn goes down, it means Arch is the backup. Uh, Chris, as of like right this moment, yeah. Now, will that be the case next week? Too early? And, and, and nothing that... Uh, Blake posted from Anwar's remarks from Sark indicated anything about next week. But, yeah, I mean, Quinn uh, is QB1 and Arch is QB2 at the moment, I would think, until – What know. do you think happens, let's assume uh, – we don't know this to be the case, but if Malik is able to go next week, do you think he slides back into that number two spot? Probably, because, again, you're I, – I, I think so, but I, I – Art showed pretty well tonight, but Malik's got two games of starting experience under his belt. I think I would agree with that. I think Malik probably, if he's healthy, is still the number two. Uh, it's kind of hard to compare what Arch did tonight yeah. versus what Malik was being asked to do. Right. But I will say I was as impressed with Arch in a couple of little things that we saw uh, as much as I was Malik, but I don't know how fair that is. Malik played – two full games and had to start and beat teams. You know, Arch is coming on the field and playing a a tech team that really might have just wanted to go home by the time he got into the game, but he moved around well. I thought, you know, there's one player where he's rolling to his right. He throws the ball on the run, throws a strike. I think it was a John Tay Cook. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, for an opening quarterback performance, considering I didn't even think he was going to throw the – he starts 0 for 2. But he comes back in the fourth quarter. They let him throw it around a little bit. It was nice to see him have a little bit of success. Mark Gibson says, for $50, what up, Mark? Uh, Jeff Ketchum commenting on a Texas blowout over Texas Tech is pure broadcasting gold. Well, thank you. Hard to top this, catch which potential playoff teams does Texas match up with best? Well, Florida State would be the, the easy one right now, right? Yes, I think. Well, that's a good question. I think they match up better with Georgia than maybe they do with Oregon or Washington out of the Pac-12. As weird as that sounds, because Georgia's playing so well, that was my initial thought, too, because those teams just move at such a fast pace. They can spread the field around. Their quarterbacks are mobile. Um, You know, I almost, yeah. I mean, Georgia's an incredible team, but – I almost feel like that's a little bit better of a matchup. Well, what about, you know, we did in fact, Michigan maybe too. Okay, probably Michigan I'd put in there. Uh, obviously. I Florida think Texas State. could deal with Michigan. Or Ohio State, honestly. Yeah. Deal with either one. Um, I mean, they're, they're, the truth of the matter is until the last couple of weeks, it didn't feel like there was truly a number one team in the country. So on any given night, that could be Texas. It could be 
Michigan, Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama, like Oregon, it has felt like I'm not going to factor Alabama, but I'm taking the teams that ranked ahead of Texas. I would, in the order, I'd say Florida State would be the, the best matchup just because their quarterback situation. Then I'd probably go Michigan, Ohio State, uh, uh, Georgia, and then. I'm not sure Oregon's not playing the best football of any team in the country right now. So I, I think play. Alabama and Georgia are playing the best too, but Oregon's right there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think anyway. Alabama and Georgia, for me, if I was doing a ranking where I just didn't want – if I was being completely honest and you gave me truth serum and I wasn't worried about writing a 10 thoughts column where 25 pages was nothing but people yelling at me for ranking Alabama second in the country and ignoring – the other hours upon hours of work that I put into the column. Like if I was just put, if I was just doing it on who do I think are the best teams in the country right now? Right now, right. The way Bill Rose playing. Yeah, man, they've got it cooking. Yeah. If we were saying regardless of record, who are the best teams in the country right now? I would go one Georgia, two Alabama, three Oregon, and I might go four Texas. Like I don't, I don't even know. I don't know what I think about the big 10 teams. They play. Mm-hmm. They play games that feel real trashy all the time. Nothing about beating – Michigan's beating Penn State. What do I care about that? They almost – they got into a tussle with Maryland. So they're not so good that they can't get dragged into a, yeah. a weird little game against Maryland. So both the Texas, Texas and Michigan are, well. Michigan runs the ball a lot, and that's you know that's strength for Texas. Um we see Notre Washington. Dame almost beat Ohio State yeah. earlier in the year. I just see you know, kind of come back to earth a little bit. So I, I don't disagree at all with your rankings. Yeah. Uh, but thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. We love the Good 50 question. hour super yeah. chats. I'm just going to be completely honest. Those are among our favorites, right behind the $100 super chats <laughs> and the rarely seen but seen tonight $199 super chats. Ryan, that was totally badass. Thank you very much. That puts a smile on our face. Invincible. I see what you're doing there. If Texas doesn't jump Oregon, I don't know what they're looking at. Uh, Oregon's been beating teams down. I mean, again, they beat a number 15th ranked team in the country tonight. Uh, what was it? 31 to seven. Was that the yeah. final? So, um, you know, it was a home game, but uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't have a problem with it. If I'm looking at it objectively, the way Oregon's been playing the last few weeks, I don't have a problem with Oregon being ranked ahead of Texas. I mean, they also get a Bo Nix bump. Probably so. That, yeah. I mean, look, look, we all know that Quinn Ewers is having a really good season. He was kind of, tonight was his worst night of the season. He really. During the game, I said, hey, you're talking about Bo Nix. I said, if I had a Heisman boat right now, he'd get my boat. That dude's playing incredible football. Man. I mean, Quinn. Finishes with a 133.7 quarterback rating, but that was aided by the worthy touchdown at the end. He was at a 105 before that throw. The touchdown. Weird, I don't look at this game. I mean, he did have the one interception, but um, I don't look at it like he played poorly necessarily. I mean, he wasn't. I like, thought he missed a bunch of throws. Did you? I mean, I thought he started a lot. Well, he did start off. Really started well. six um, for six. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't like if I'm just kind of big picture looking at this game, I don't, I'm not going to walk away from thinking, yeah, Quinn didn't play very Before well. Before the interception, happened. you he misses a wide open worthy along the sidelines where oh, worthy has to wait on the ball and he yeah. ends up. His back foot hits the pylon, but oh yes, that one. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you know, I mean, and I thought maybe wasn't... Worthy could have tried a little harder to keep his feet in on that play, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, he's I mean, he's just, you know, he's running full speed, wide open. The ball's behind him. He yeah. starts to slow down, and he just didn't have great control of his feet. It just took a long time for the ball. We're, we're at a point. Yours is doing a thing right now. Everything's a touch pass, which is so strange because when Quinn first arrived, he kind of had the Chris Sims reputation of he just throws it hard. Malik has had some of that too, right? It's like all he knows is the fastball. Quinn's having, and maybe it's because he's coming off the injury. I don't know. Quinn's having a hard time dropping the hammer and throwing the ball down the field. If everything's a little bit of a lob, Everything's a little bit too touchy, uh, and consequently, they're not really connecting on these downfield throws. I also thought tonight with Quinn, 
I thought, a, so I thought two weeks ago against TCU, it was clear that they were trying to get the ball out of his hands as fast as possible. Like mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. everybody's dead body was Quinn even going to get touched. And then last week it felt like, okay, the hesitant Quinn has gone away. And I thought he just played football last week. And I thought, well, that's a great sign for his injury that, you know, he got a little roughed up last week, but he didn't seem to flinch from it. And I thought, okay, well, it's been about, it's been a month. So he's maybe he's good now. Tonight's five weeks since the injury occurred. And I thought he was way more apprehensive. It was clear the shoulder was in his mind. There was a point earlier in the game, Jason, where Ewers was like a third and maybe six or seven. And he starts to run and take off. And he's got a defender in front of him, which I'm not so sure that if Quinn made a move, he wouldn't have been able to get by this guy. Instead, Quinn just collapses to the ground. You remember the I play? I remember the play. Yeah, it, well, I think it was even a sack, or it was yes. right the line of it was. It was like a two-yard loss. Yeah, he just he he slid, which you don't normally see quarterbacks do behind the line of scrimmage, right? They usually do that after they've run for ten yards or whatever. Well, it he, felt like his instincts were telling him to run, yeah. and then it felt like right before he was going to break the line of scrimmage, something went off in his head, like you're not Somebody supposed to do that. And he just, yeah, he just like a defender flash in his peripheral, and he just got down to protect yes. himself. It was very the location of that slide. I was like, well, that was kind of different. And then there were a couple of sacks later in the game where it just felt like I don't know. It felt like look, I don't and and if he needs to be overprotective yeah. to keep him on the field, then Quinn, you do what you gotta do. I'm just saying that I thought tonight he was a little more tentative than what we even saw from him a week ago. And it was a reminder, oh, yeah, he is coming back from an injury, and we should probably not take for granted that he's been able to come back so early from this. Um, By the way, speaking of that, Quinn had a grade two separation, right? Morton, the uh, tech quarterback, had a grade three and played through it. Dude, how tough is that, dude? Like, I mean – I'm assuming grade you, three is worse than It's grade kind two. of a rhetorical question, but because you, you kind of, there's kind of no answer, but at the same time, you also answered it uh, yeah. at the same time. Oscar says, Catch, I super chatted earlier this year. I said this was the year. I stand by it. Not to be year, but <laughs> God damn, what a way to end my four years at the school. I am ways wanted to be at. I was sobbing. God bless you, Oscar. <laughs> Sounds like Oscar is having a hell of a time one, one way or another. So. He's sobbing in a good way. Yeah. He's happy not to be, be your yet, but like he's Oscar. You just keep doing, you keep living the life, Oscar. Uh, everybody's with you tonight. And congratulations uh, on, if you're ending your four years, I'm assuming Oscar's getting his degree. So awesome for Oscar on, on that. Taking a biochem test just a couple of weeks ago. So smarter oh, than you and I, Jason. Oh, wow. Awesome. Good for him. Dark Borg says nothing. We did this one. Weird. These things keep popping. They just want to shame me twice. Why you got, he did that on purpose. You got to give a hundred dollars <laughs> to shame Jason twice. <laughs> Andrew for 11 and one. Aha. I see what you're saying. 11 and one hook them. Who will be Tex want to be rival now that Texas is gone? Well, it'll probably be Baylor or TCU. Uh, right. Yeah. They'll try to manufacture it, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, Baylor and Texas. Maybe Houston. Hey, maybe Houston. I don't know. They've had some like coaching kind of weird. Coaching well, I don't know. Like, Where does the big 12 championship go through? <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a shithole wherever it is. <laughs> wow. Jason with a rarely seen 1130 at night shithole blast. Uh, Rogue Shop for $19.99. Thank you, Rogue Shop. Happy day after Thanksgiving giving. <laughs> we love y'all. Can't believe we've won 11 games. God is good. Rogue Shop, thank you very much. That's the first ever Thanksgiving giving I've ever seen. And in a weird way, that should be a real world. That should be a, a real word, actually. I uh, hope all's well in your world, Rogue Shop. Uh, give the missus a, a hug for us. You guys have fun celebrating tonight. Uh, and thanks for your continued support. 
Matter of fact, I'm going to take a, a rogue shop hit here in just a second. I'm starting to get tired. Why not just go the distance? Uh, Blake says in the super chat, Worthy's physical toughness is vastly underrated. Yes, Blake, I wrote about that in my post game thoughts, and I, I thought it j- before tonight, but I, tonight I was like, just come some. I said he runs tough. He finishes runs. He looks like a feather would knock him over, right? Just from a physical standpoint, but he does, man. He falls forward, and he is a much tougher runner than you would ever uh, in, think when you look at him from a physical perspective. So. You know, I understand when it comes to the NFL, they're going to probably knock him a little bit for his size. But we all you know he's super quick, he's fast, he's elusive. But he is a physical, tough runner, especially for his size. So, man, I Blake, I, I saw the same thing tonight. I thought the same thing tonight. I wrote the same thing tonight. So, couldn't agree more. Uh, Invincible says, for $1.99, Oregon beat Texas Tech by eight. And this That's back when Tech was – kind of shitty. I mean, they're actually playing decent football now. It was in Lubbock, to be fair, but uh, I don't know that the committee will take that into account, but you know, just a long shit. time ago. Yeah, it was, but you know, I mean... I mean, that's like bring I, Texas beat, you know, that was a, a, approximately the same time so, but Texas same played time Wyoming as- and, and won by 11. And I know Wyoming beat Tech, yeah, but... Well, you say, hey, it was a long time ago, so it doesn't matter as much. Well, Texas's win against Alabama was a long time. I think it might have been the same week. It, it was probably doesn't matter ago. as much. Huh? I said, and I, the committee's been telling us for weeks that the, the win in September against Alabama matters in the matchup between Texas and Alabama, right? It's the thing that's keeping Alabama boxed out. Know. Well, I don't know what the committee, but all the – talking heads seem to think if it's comes down to Texas and Alabama, Texas gets in above Alabama, even if Alabama beats. Well, Alabama. and Texas keeps boxing Alabama out. No, we mentioned the top eight teams haven't lost. The I'm Alabama saying if Alabama beats the Georgia. Time. If Alabama beats Georgia, I don't can't, I don't know what the committee will do, but all, you know, ESPN, they were saying it tonight. They're like, no way Texas gets in above Alabama. Everybody's saying, I mean, I don't, I'm with you. I, I, you well, it's not Alabama that would worry me. It's Georgia. It's Georgia who I mentioned earlier is the committee's clear number one. Would they drop the clear number one team in the country to five in the last week of the season? Maybe them above Alabama still though. How would you have them above Alabama? If, if they lose to Alabama the week before the final I mean, ranking? again, I, don't I think the committee over here take- does some new shit that we've never seen before. Yeah. I don't, man, that would, that would be complete chaos. Alabama beats Georgia. The, the thing next- is, I said this, they're not going the, – the, the, the committee president is not going to step up in his first interview and say, we think Georgia's actually the best team in the country, but we dropped them to fifth. And the best team in the country isn't in the playoff. My fear is that Georgia would drop to four because the committee deep down – that's why I said root for Georgia, get rid of Alabama, and then you just need Florida. So Georgia's State. at four in that scenario. And let's just say Ohio State's in there somewhere, right? Let's say Washington's in there. Uh, and then let's say um, God, Florida State's in there because if they go undefeated. You think Georgia gets in above Alabama with that last spot as the first Very possibly. I don't they think so if Alabama Georgia. beats them. If Alabama beats them in the conference championship, I think it's either Texas or Alabama, hundred percent. Okay, we'll see. I, I mean, I shouldn't. I, no, no, no. Let me, let me. I'm not going to say anything's hundred percent because this is a total clusterfuck. So I don't, I don't know what, what I would think. I think but, this uh, committee loves them some Georgia, and I, yeah, and I don't blame and, them. And, and I, I just, it's impossible for me to think that the committee is going to drop the team that they think is by far not, not a close number one. They are a very definitive number one. They're on their own line. And then below them are the two Big Ten teams. And then there's another line that's Florida State, Washington, Oregon, and then Texas. I just have a hard time believing they're going to take the team on the top line and drop them down below maybe a couple of teams on the third line. I don't know. The other thing is – I'm also the guy that last – beat Ohio State – this is the other conversation. Let's just have this conversation real quick, Jason. Mm-hmm. Let's say Ohio State loses to Michigan tomorrow 26-23 in overtime. 
How far does Ohio State fall? I think they'd have, well, they'd be behind every undefeated team. So it depends on what fl- happens to Florida. What Our do Florida- you do with Ohio State in the Oregon, Texas, Alabama trio? Where do they slide in? I think they'd probably be the highest ranked one loss team. But then on the other side, I'm like, you got to take into account when they lost, right? They have the most recent. Well, loss, so. you could do, I think you might be right. The thing is, if Oregon beats Washington, then Oregon has the impetus impotence to jump ahead of Ohio state. Right. So Mm -hmm. they don't even have to worry about if Ohio state is ahead of them this week, they have a monster game next week that winning that game and then still having a conference championship, I think would send them ahead of Ohio state. I think they should jump in in that. And that's, we're talking a lot of ifs and ands, but in that scenario, they should be ahead of Ohio state, Ohio state, they lost to a Michigan team who I don't think is very good. I mean, what's Ohio State's best win? They, they almost lost to Notre Dame. Oregon's playing really well. They just beat, in that scenario, an undefeated Washington team. Um, I think they probably do deserve to go a, a, a bell. From a resume standpoint, I think you're right. Yeah. In talking about Georgia falling, I'm the same guy last year that I was irate that TCU got in. I said, if you can't win your conference championship game, you should not be in – the college football playoff. Well, I thought it was a travesty that TCU got in last year. Uh, I think obviously it showed itself in that championship game. So, um, you know, I, I'm the guy sort of what I'm saying, if Georgia loses to Alabama, I don't think they should get in over a one loss Texas team. I just don't. It's so fascinating how different you can get four or five people in a room. Yeah. And it feels like everybody feels different about like one thing, you know what I mean? It's like, we can all agree on most things. And then there's, I'm I'm fascinated to see what the committee does on some of this stuff, because I still keep expecting there to be chaos. It hasn't happened yet. I keep thinking to myself, the November K and look, maybe tomorrow is it. There are, there's nothing other than Florida and Florida state tomorrow. And look, that could be enough. Florida beats Florida state tomorrow. Suddenly, well, look, suddenly suddenly Alabama does think that they've got a chance. Texas will feel like if they win, they're in. Um, it might – even that scenario potentially opens the door. I don't know. It would really depend on the dynamics of a – I think if, if Michigan loses, the committee's like, you motherfuckers are at the back of the line. <laughs> I do too, and they deserve it. Um, Hey, someone said, well, TCU beat Michigan last year. I don't care. Michigan beat Michigan last year. TCU was handed that game. And also, Sark must be having the longest damn press conference ever. I'm telling you, he enjoyed this one. needing to use the restroom for about 30 minutes. So if you need to go use the bathroom, go do it real quick. I'll wait, when Omar comes in, I'm probably going to bail. I won't even ask the question. I know that you need to go. Uh, JR says, catch OU as Quinn's worst game. Uh, stares down the receiver and gets intercepted to open the game. Fumbles. And another interception, not even close. All right, so JR, I'll just do this. Blake, can we put that graphic back up of the list of Quinn's games? JR, I know what you're saying. I would say that Quinn had a bad quarter. I'm going to take your super chat down. So technically, Quinn's final ranking today was 133.7. So technically, this was his worst passing efficiency game of the year. Oh, he plays really well in the final three quarters of that game. Like really well. Uh, And he finishes with a 160 quarterback rating. I would disagree with you that it's not even close. Because I could argue it's not even close in my favor based on the, you know, quarterback, you know, I I don't, I only use the pass and efficiency rating, not because I think it's the end all be all. Believe me, I don't. Uh, but there's there's no confirmation bias in it. It's just a list of numbers, and there's no opinions associated with them. Uh oh, Jason. Oh, Anwar's here. Good, you see me squirming here. So all right. yes, I do. <laughs> you get out. We're gonna bring Anwar in. Anwar, can I get a mic test from you real quick? Test one, test two. You test... sound good. Okay, good. I'm uh, 
in a different place than I normally would be. Are you in a coach's box? Yes. Okay. So, um, and so it's a little bit darker. By the way, I can't see the chat for some reason um, at all, by the way. Uh, it's kind of weird. But, yeah, the, the, the room I normally go in was occupied, and so I'm in the coach box. So uh, it smells like a fresh uh, skull bandit inside. I was going to say, it's, you got, there's dip cups everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. And so before we go to Sark and, like, and get your general thoughts, because – Really, I want to know about the vibe on, in the stadium. Nah. I want to hear about it. I want a full description of being in the building tonight. But I want to set it up with this super chat because it kind of goes into what I what I want to know about, which was what was it like? How salty were the players? They're talking crap on social media again. Jamari says a uh, viral video on Twitter was Sark in the locker room after the game, breaking the team huddle, saying – Fuck around and find out on three. <laughs> so on this is, go. This is if there ever was, I'm going to talk my ish kind of game afterwards. And by the way, I'm really disappointed. I cannot see the chat. Can you see the chat on your end? Yeah, I just took it down though. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's just put it back up if you want to test it out. No, no, no. Like I just can't. It, it just says it's like not working. He says, close the tab and come back. What do you mean, close the tab? Like, what does that mean? I mean, it sounds like leave and come back. You mean like come back on the show? Yeah, like close the tab, the browser, the whole thing down, and then come back. So you come back, and I'm going to knock out a Super Chat question, and then we'll be, like, completely caught up uh, until the next batch of Super Chats come in. Oscar says, the school, I, Oscar, you're trying so hard. Bless your heart. Uh, the school I am why the school I always always wanted to be at. Uh, but anyways, I'm emotionally indebted to Sark for the rest of his career. He gave me something I haven't had since 2009. I was seven. Hey, to the victor go the spoils. Look, I've been hard on Sark for the first two years of this season. I'm one of the reasons why I picked nine and three this season was I needed to see it from Sark. To go 11 and one is something that Sark's never done before. And in the end, I love the composure that this team has played with. Uh, I think I said it on Monday uh, on House Divided here on Orange Bloods Live that I, I thought Sark sounded as good on Monday at being the head coach at Texas and don't want to make a big deal out of the press conference. But I thought on Monday when Anwar asked him the culture question, Sark cut a five minute promo. And I was like, my God, Sark, you sound amazing. And I walked away from that thinking if a team is a reflection of its coach, I think this team's in a really good place this week. It's one of the reasons why I picked this team to win 44 to 13. I thought Texas was going to romp. They did. And, and Sark gets a lot of credit for that. If you're going to get all the responsibility for five and seven and eight and five and not winning bowl games and whatever, then you get a lot of credit when you go 11 and one. And that's how it works. That's how it works. You, you have a badass season and suddenly you've got street cred that you've never had before. And I think Steve Sarkeesian has done a really, really, really good job this season. Um, even in a year when his offense hasn't been what he wants it to be, he's still done a fantastic job. Um, we're waiting for Anwar to come back. Weird that Anwar hasn't come back yet, Blake. Like, oh, is that him? Okay. So Onward is rejoining the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so then I tried to rejoin, and then it told me, Restream told me that my camera wasn't working. And I'm like, well, yes, it is. I, I was, was just, just saying, uh, Anwar, I was just saying, Anwar's not back yet. Like, he should have been back. Something's happening. Yeah, yeah. Restream was like, your camera's not working. This, it, said, it said, enable your camera. I'm like, it's enabled. Like, I don't have anything running. So then I just restarted my computer. I can see the chat. I'm in a coach's box. Like I said, if it was a candle, it would be fresh uh, dip. <laughs> you know, like this this fresh dip in here. Like, mm, that smells better. I feel like there's a tons of, 
tons of germs <laughs> rolling around in this piece. Remember, remember Getch, uh, and I'm going to talk about it. Do you remember when? I know exactly it, what you're going to say. You remember that, that during the COVID year, yeah. that had to be one of those coach bosses, and they was just like bloody uh, uh, Band-Aids and shit. I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> this is the worst thing ever. Um, Ketch, so I would, I would say this. I would say that the, um, first of all, full stadium. First, I'll start there, right? Full stadium, um, which not something we're used to seeing after Thanksgiving. That doesn't happen at, at all. Um, and then, you know, just the aftermath of it, catch <laughs> that, like I said, when there's the, you know what, this, this is this, this is definitely a team that was taking a lot of mental notes uh, over the, the this course of the season. And when they finally had to have that, that moment where they can say, you know what, that whole shack uh, this to Kobe and tell me how my butt tastes. Well, this is what that was today. Like, and this was <laughs> shot. I was shot. I was, like, if you look on the UT Twitter account, I'm like, who took over this I account? Like, who, 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 what, like, who was in charge of graphics? This week, because whoever's in the charge of graphics, they're it's like the guy you know from what? the Longhorn Network a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that person is that person was in charge of graphics. So from the 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 your mark video that they put up um, at the end of, at, at the end, to then they did another goodbye Texas Tech video, uh, but that was with the um, Toy Story characters. In Texas Tech rolling off into the sunset. Um, so there was a troll with that portion there. Um, obviously, got everyone, I, everyone's seen the Sark video. I haven't seen the Sark video yet, but I, I hear what you guys are saying about that. Then, um, you know, you see the guys talking their, their stuff on Twitter about, you know, nothing runs through Lubbock, so on and so forth. Like, you know what, catch? Hey, t- Texas has had to take. So many hits and so many blows and so many insults from people from the time that they've decided uh, that they're going to go into the SEC. And the thing that uh, Sarkeesian said the other week that I thought was pretty valid, actually, is like, he goes, the the people take it out on the players. The players didn't decide to go. It was the program that decided to go. The players have been the recipients of it. You know, and so, you know, so those guys have a chance to talk their ish. Yeah. Talk your ish, run up the score on tech and and then talk your ish as much as you want to. I'm all about it. Um, I have no problems with it, catch. And I think it's fa- fascinating that uh your mark was here at the game. Sarkeesian did talk about did confirm that. And Sark kind of Sark's taking it easy on your mark. Like he's he you you Sark is not doing what Lane Kiffin would do. Because if this was Lane Kiffin in this situation, oh, so he would he would be killing your mark at this moment. And Sark was just kind of like, yeah, you know, I know how it is when you go to these like public speaking things and cameras are always on you and you, you're trying to get the crowd kind of pumped up. And, you know, so, you know, he said some things, but he basically he's like, yeah, I kind of understand. But I, I think that's what he's saying in public. Then they're like, but then it gets it's behind it in the closed doors. To do so. Yes. Yes. He can totally, totally crap on this guy if he wanted to. And he hasn't done that. So catch, I, you know, I'd see that. And then, but it goes back to the other thing. Last thing on that one is Sark still went back to as, as good of, as this is, as cool of a moment as this is. He still went back to like the job still not finished. They still got another well, game. It's not, he's you know, right. So, like they do. Yeah, so it's like they, they still have another game that's left. And so, you know, they 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 still – he feels like that's what they have to focus in on. They'll see who wins on Saturday. He said regardless, it's going to be a quality opponent. And, you know, that that's that's really where his focus is. So I think he's – I think he's doing the – doing both. Like, I think he's enjoying the moment. But I think his big picture is really still remains the thing that he talks about and uh, he's focused on. I didn't see him come in there with – like he was, you know, doused with Gatorade bottles. He was he wasn't crowd surfing. I don't believe catch. You have to tell me if the, that went on, but I, I don't think he was crowd surfing. You know, after wins or anything like that. So I think it was just kind of another step in the process for him. 
Tell me about the arch moment, the buzz in the stadium. Uh, like, paint the picture for me. Well, I think you guys, and I'm, I'm sure you or Blake have already know that, you know, Malik got hurt during the Keelan Robinson run. run. So, you know, the, the whole, like, he might have been pissed off and this and that. It's like, I don't think Malik, nothing about Malik Murphy has ever been like a guy who would just quit during the middle of a game. Like, that. that's never been any part of his DNA makeup. But somehow, some way, freaky niche happens when he gets hurt. And... <laughs> It was like it it was literally like a Manning had stepped on the field. I, I mean, it was when he started. I was like, I, I, I figured they're gonna pull on at some point, pull Quinn. And I was like, all right, that's gonna happen at some point. And I don't know what I, I was I was on my laptop doing something, and I just hear this like roar of the crowd, and I thought well, maybe they showed Arch on the on the screen or something. I realized he's in the game. Even Sark, I asked Sark about it after afterwards, and he he was like, he's never seen a backup quarterback get that kind of love or attention uh, from someone. So uh, from a crowd, the way he did, it, it was literally hanging on his every throw uh, that he had, and so it was it was a crazy moment. Of course, his first series, he goes over two, right? But then Sark said, like at the end of the day, though, he said he did actually do some good things at the end that Sark was pretty happy with, you know, so a little bit of jitters in the beginning, but Sark ended up being happy with, you know, the, the one of the, the last drive and how he performed. So, um, yeah, it was, it, it was, if there was a, if you're, you know, Malik Murphy and you're like, come on, man, like th that, these stars aligning are probably like, to your point, like, come on, man, like, did this really happen? That Like, he's just watching Keelan Robinson and somehow he gets run into somehow and he's, and he gets hurt. So, but it was it was a it was a memorable moment. It really was a memorable moment. I, I think most people will remember. catch. I was getting text messages from people in the game during the game about Arch. Like it's just, on why this it's, is why I've never believed that Malik would beat him out in a competition because yeah, it's fair. It is hard to quantify what it means to not play that guy because these people are in the middle of an 11 and one season and they might make the playoffs. And the thing that got their rocks off more than anything was the five-star quarterback making his debut. And yes. <laughs> these things, like social media came alive and your, my phone started buzzing and I got guys in my phone yeah. that dig Malik. And then it was like, oh, mm -hmm. Arch is in there. And, oh, Arch is rolling. And, look, he's more athletic than Malik. And it didn't take long for people. It was like, that guy's awesome. <laughs> and in the end, was he awesome? Well, no. He completed a couple no. passes. No. <laughs> he had a nice scramble for a first down. But people will do with this performance what they did with Malik's in the spring game. You – you you turn little moments like this into whatever it is that you want to. And although Quinn, if he comes back, is obviously the starting quarterback next year, people will be craving more of the dopamine hit that Arch Manning brings to the table. Real quick, we got a $50 super chat, so I will always give you know me. Can we stop talking about the CFP? and just win a Big 12 championship. Sure. I mean, I feel like Anwar and I haven't even done that since Anwar came on. I I, yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't – Jeremy, I think with your – first of all, we haven't done that. Um, but I also think – but, but Jeremy, I I think you can we can do two things at one time, though. Like I, I don't I don't think it's somehow some way I, I, I always say this, Jeremy, it's up to the team to remain focused on we their goals. Sure. It's not up to me. <laughs> that, ain't got, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Sarge is in on one game at a time. It's not like I have to be focusing on one game. Catch, catch, catch doesn't call meetings with us on, on Mondays and like, hey, guys, I need you guys to be focused in on this week. And I don't need you guys to be writing 
or worried about anything else big picture, all right? Don't be like, doing prize picks. I need no. you focused. <laughs> no. Put fantasy football away if that's distracting you. I need you focused. Focus on what they – no, I don't – Jeremy, we don't have to be focusing on one thing. The, Texas, you can focus in on two things, which is, yes, Texas is in the, is in the Big 12 championship game, and that's what we've talked a lot about. But we can also focus in on, like, hey, Texas is also poten- – Jeremy, Texas is also potentially one win away from being in a playoff. Can't ignore that. You can't be like, okay, now let's talk about it. No. <laughs> if they win and a domino falls, like an FSU loses or something like that, they're literally in the playoffs. I, like, we can't ignore that. Like, I, I can't just like, nah, man, we got to be focused. No, they focus. We can talk about the hell we – Catch and I can do a show on Monday, Overreaction Monday. You know, we can talk about 2024. <laughs> And, and don't, I mean, we wouldn't do that, but you know, that's not how, that's just how not, I appreciate you, Jeremy, but we can do two things at one time. BK817 <laughs> says, awesome crowd tonight. I think all 100,000 plus were at Bevo Boulevard in Longhorn City Limits two hours before kickoff. You described a great crowd tonight, Anwar. Oh yeah, it was, it was, it was a crowd that catch, I caught a little traffic coming in. I was actually a little slowed down. You know, I take Mopac. You're like, uh, what is this? Yeah, <laughs> just catch. I can tell you, man. There was a time. There was a times I was like, I ain't got to worry about no traffic going to DKR. I'm good. <laughs> and <laughs> this was a time I was like, I came off a of, uh, came off a of Mopac, you know, taking the back way in. I was like, oh, a little bit of traffic here. And then I got on MLK. I'm like, oh, I'm sitting for a second. So I'm like, all right, this is this is gonna be a good good little crowd. But yeah, there everyone's there. By the way, I did do the thing for BK that he asked uh, after Iowa State, and I sent him a video for it. Hey, real quick, we'll get to the other super chats here in just a second. Senior day stuff. Was there any buzz at all? That were any questions asked in the post game just about participation? Byron Murphy walked on senior night tonight, and he's a junior. Like there, you know, there were just a couple couple of things I was wondering. Did, did any of it come up at all? Yeah, I mean, someone asked him about it, and he said, you know, their their philosophy as a staff is if you have any questions about potentially coming back, then you should walk on senior night so you have the opportunity to hear your name called. Um, and and so you know, so any guy who's borderline, you know, that go ahead and go ahead and walk. So that's that 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 is why so something to take a mental note going forward and you know they'll see what happens uh after that but that was kind of like the only thing and they said you know they'll have the conversations i think i I don't know if he says next week or not but they'll start having the conversations with guys about their decisions um byron murphy i i think i I think he's gone yeah i was gonna say he's he's got a senior ball invite he's walking on senior night as a junior yeah, I think mm. I, I I think he I think he's like yeah I did this is fun but I'm gonna go ahead and, and capitalize and make my to money. your credit you're the very first person earlier maybe is it either in the spring or summer that said Byron Murphy if he had a big season I never heard anybody else say it you said it earlier in the off season and I totally poo pooed it and was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he ain't going, he's, he's going pro early. Like I'm going pro early. Um, and in the end you, you were right. And I think I was wrong. Uh, Jeremy says for $20, we aren't in the playoffs until we win a big 12 championship. Jeremy, you're right. It just doesn't mean that that's the only thing we have to talk about. I just asked him about senior day and Byron Murphy. That doesn't have anything to do with Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship game. Just we can multitask. Look, we've been going for an hour and 24 minutes. We can't just talk about the Big 12 championship. Kind of hang it, Jeremy. Trust us. That's what I would say. Trust us. Anwar is going to write a column tomorrow. No, t- actually, today's Friday. Oh, I 
You're so you're so right. <laughs> it's just, it's a All weird thing. Like, sleep in tomorrow morning. <laughs> yes. Rare, rare. I get to work all day on my column on Sunday. Like that's gonna be. He's gonna whip around. I'm just letting you know we'll do we we will do a delicate job of of straddling the fence on all of these things. I promise we won't let you down. Uh, Invincible asks for a dollar ninety nine. Invincible. If I'm gonna cut you to the front of the line, come on now, not just dollar ninety nine. You see, you, you see how Jeremy's doing it. Jeremy is skipping the line because he's putting twenties and fifties out there. We should keep arguing with Jeremy. He keeps putting money in. <laughs> you know, let me know when Jeremy's in the chat for your shows, and yeah. I'll just come in and start start alienating him. Uh, buy or sell. We beat Oak State by 20, and we are in. Listen, I, can I just say this, Catch? Man, Oklahoma State's such a fickle team to me. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not counting anything for them versus BYU. I mean, who knows? You're right. I brought this up numerous times tonight. Like, I kind of have a sneaky feeling that they might stub their toe tomorrow on war, yeah. and then Oklahoma backdoors its way into the Big 12 championship. And then we would almost, it feels like out of nowhere, have a Texas OU rematch when it's felt like for the last month mm. that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. And boy, what a week next week suddenly becomes if Texas and Oklahoma State, okay, Texas and OU out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that's. That yeah, that that's like one of those like uh like pop up concerts where you know like all of a sudden like an artist it just is sh shows up you're like well I didn't expect this like you're just at this place one night and they're like yeah I just think I want to do a jam session you're like I yeah. did not see this coming uh like Kevin Hart you're just going somewhere in a Cap City on a Tuesday night and Kevin Hart pops up you're like what <laughs> Kevin Hart's here like that that's what that would be I would I. And by the way, catch. I still say I would like Texas to play Oklahoma uh, in the championship game because I just think um, being able to, uh, you know, avenge your only loss of the season. I just think it, it can help. It can't hurt. I, it just. It, I don't think playing a Oklahoma State team moves many needles for you. I had, I, and I wrote about this. Was so interesting that I did put it in the war room. Mm -hmm. on Wednesday night, and some people kind of got pissed. Not pissed, but like Arlong68 and a few other people were like, why would you even put that in the war room? And I thought, because in my head, because when I read the text messages this week, I thought it was really interesting that a, a very affluent donor who has access to players sent me a few notes this week that were like, and his whole attitude was like, no shit. FYI, if you're wondering how he received these remarks, he's had a number of players who've come up to him and said, can't believe we either underestimated OU or we really regret that we did. And it wasn't just those remarks. And the thing that I wasn't able to add was the full context of the remarks from them to him but apparently each of these players, in addition to saying they felt like they overlooked Oklahoma, which, again, this source that told me this couldn't believe that these players were saying this. Like, how could you possibly overlook Oklahoma? It's Oklahoma. But he said in the defense of the players, they each gave him examples of in their minds what underestimating Oklahoma meant. And... I think this team would like a crack at Oklahoma. I think if you told them, A, behind door number one is Oklahoma State, B, is Oklahoma. If you said you can choose either game that you want, we'll do a poll, and the winner gets in. I do think these players would like another shot at Oklahoma to do the very thing that you're talking about, which is to avenge the only loss this season. There's more risk involved. Yeah. I, think, I think Oklahoma's a more dangerous team. Than Oklahoma State, they've already beat you once this year. And oh, by the way, they're just better at quarterback than Oklahoma State. The difference between having to deal with Dylan Gabriel versus 
what Oklahoma State has on the field right now. You know me. I don't think Dylan Gabriel is awesome, mm-hmm. but he's good. Yeah. He can, he, on any given day, he can beat you. I'm just saying I think Texas players will put their heads on pillows tonight. I think deep down they want another shot at the Sooners. Yeah. And you gotta you you gotta want them because go, you know, you can get a shot at Mike Gundy, but and that that's that's I, I mean I I don't think them dudes give a shit about Mike Gundy. <laughs> no, no, like that that whole the mullet's not even there anymore. Like that no, it's just it is what it is. They're not a great pro they'll no, no, they'll go in, they'll handle their business. It is what it is. But if you could say like close it out like that, 12 and one. You beat oh you uh, again, you know, and you're like, I, I got that. Yeah, that that's gotta be you 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 want BYU to go ahead and, and, and pull off the upset so you can get some get back against OU. But you just gotta know it does yeah. come with risk. I can yeah. remember look, so Anwar, as a Phillies fan, I'm just gonna make this personal for a second. As a Phillies fan, we won a World Series in 2008 against Tampa. Mm-hmm. And it was cool, right? First World Series championship that I've ever really experienced out as a Phillies fan. The next year, it was, you know, you're going through the American League, and I told myself, I want the Yankees. Because if we if we go back to back and one of the teams that we beat is the Yankees, now you're historically good forever. You're a back-to-back team and you beat the Yankees. And, and that means more than beating Tampa Bay. Well, guess what? The Phillies got the Yankees in the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? The Phillies didn't want that smoke, as it turned out. The Yankees end up winning that. They were a more dangerous team. They end up being a better team. And that's the only risk. And it's why, hey, if Oklahoma State makes it, I think you should be able to turn your head, turn the page pretty quickly and say, all right, well, now we can avenge last year's loss. Um, you know, as a fan, you can say it's the easier path. Yeah. I'm usually 99% of the time, give me the easiest path. Mm-hmm. But I do understand Texas players. And I understand anybody wanting a piece of Oklahoma. It's just that it becomes a more dangerous game. Whereas I think next week of Oklahoma State's in that game, you and I will not discount Mike Gundy, but it will still feel like a little bit of a potential coronation game. As what, do you think the line like would be? what do you think the line would be? Like if the opening line would be for that? Texas by eight and a half? I can see that. Maybe nine? I, th- I was thinking like more like nine, five, but you know, you might be right with eight and a half. Well, I wonder if it starts out like something like that. Mm-hmm. And then a bunch of initial money comes in on Oklahoma State, yeah. which I would understand. Like, you know, if you told me Oklahoma State in 10, I might go, well, I'll take Gundy plus 10. Because I do think it's good. I do think next week could be a real good game that it won't necessarily be a walk in the park, no matter which Oklahoma school uh, Texas gets. And by the way, Kansas State officially eliminated tonight or today with the Oklahoma win. So it's either one or two. Texas is in. It's either Oklahoma or Oklahoma State. We'll find out 2.30 tomorrow when Oklahoma State uh, plays against BYU at home. Boy, first of all, BYU had lost to Oklahoma last week in kind of a gut-wrenching fashion on war. Mm -hmm. And it's in Stillwater. But you (laughs) just... They were in South, whatever Alabama, North, South, I can't even remember <laughs> which Alabama it was. I think yeah. it was South. Um, you know, that was in Stillwater when they beat them 33 to 7. So anything's possible. Yeah, I, I would just, it'll be fascinating to watch it. You know, like I said that would be a 2 30 game. So um, what's Oscar saying? Six Street, Six Street, Six Street, sing it with me, catch. Six <laughs> Street. Sixth Street, Sixth Street. Is that is that first of all? What is that? A, is that just a chant? Is that random? I like think Oscar wants to go down to Dirty Sixth. 
You must have got on a dirty six mm. and really get it on. Boy, he he must risk his life. <laughs> it's like, you know what? The cheapest place for me to get drunk is dirty six. I'm wow. gonna go drink some Long Island iced teas and just Dude, get drunk on fifteen dollars. That'd be right. That'd do, as opposed to going to like Fifth Street and paying fifteen dollars a drink. Uh, he can go down to Dirty Six and just get drunk on fifteen. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there, listen, I mean, there's, there's, there's Dirty Six. I mean, there's East places in the East that you can go to. Like, there's, it's other places outside the Dirty Six. Like, I, 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 but you know, nonetheless, you know, he's I love a student. Oh, he's a student when he's got no choice. I mean, no, what, what about Rainy Street? Age, you can go but, to Rainy Street, though. Rainy yeah. Street's a little but bit I'm, better. But if I was a UT student. Yeah, I'd probably want, look. You're guaranteed to somebody see somebody get a fight. You're gonna see a fight. You're gonna see fights break out. It, it's it's where the most chaos is gonna be. Yes, and maybe when Texas is eleven and one for the first time since you were seven years old, maybe you want to see things get buck wild. Oscar, I'm not judging you at all. By the way, Jeremy did chime back in. Where to go? Hold on. Did he? Let me know for two dollars. Baby oh. step sketch. See, you mentioned it, and Jeremy was like, Oh, <laughs> oh, I see what you guys are doing. Uh, love, Jeremy, love you, there's Jeremy. no such thing as a baby step when this team is one win away from potentially being in the playoffs. Like, I don't know what part of that do you feel like we should just ignore. <laughs> And just put our head in the sands because somehow, some way, we're just we're just, we're not talking about the playoffs in week one, right? Like this ain't like Texas beat Bama in week two, and Ketch and I got on there like I think this is a playoff team. Forget the Big Twelve season. Like we're literally are at the final. There's only one more game and, and left. Jeremy, Anwar, and I've been very consistent. In like three weeks ago, we were like, hey. Now's not the time. You got to win these next three games. You got to win two on the road. You got to hurt quarterback. Like we we haven't been prematurely talking playoffs. No, it, the regular season just ended. We can't wait until the Heisman ceremony. <laughs> we cannot wait that long. Uh, Dark Borg says, "Catch, how do you compare this Texas team to 2004 and 2008?" Uh, Anwar, no good ever comes from rooting for Oklahoma. All right. I don't know that I think they're as good as 04 and 08. I definitely don't think they're as good as 08. I think the 08 team is the second best team that I've ever covered since covering Texas. I think 04 is third for me. The thing is, if we go all the way back to 1983, Onwar, mm -hmm. I might write about this. I don't know, but it was something that popped up into my head because it's 40 years. If you go back 40, I'm 47. So I'm not much older than the number I'm about to give you. But if you go back 40 years and you say in the last 40 years, how many Texas teams have won a conference championship and then won their bowl game. Mm. It's happened one time. Really? You got, in 1999, they win the Southwest Conference, but they get beat by 43 to Miami. In 95, they win the Southwest Conference Championship, but they lose to Virginia Tech in the Super Bowl. The next year, they beat Nebraska for the first Big 12 championship, but they lose by 30 to Penn State in the Fiesta Bowl in a game – that John Makovic lost the roster and the players just started calling their own plays, um, which included a fake punt in that game. Uh, then you've got to go after 96. It doesn't happen again since 2005. In 05, they do everything. But in 08, they win the major bowl, but they don't win the conference championship. Same in 04. Both 04 and 08 are teams – that didn't win the Big 12, but won major bowl games. In 09, they win the Big 12, but they don't win the bowl game. In 18, they win the bowl game, but they don't win the Big 12. In the last 40 years, 40, no Texas team has won a conference championship and won a major bowl game. Now, look, I, 
it'd be better to get into the playoffs if you could. However, what I'm telling you is while I don't think this team on war, I wouldn't rank it above 2004 and 2008. This team has a chance to do something that only one other Texas team has done in 40 years. And if they win the Big 12 championship, don't make the playoffs, but win their bowl game. I know that will sadden a lot of people who are desperate for this team to get into the postseason and get into a playoff. But it would be the second most spectacular season of the last 40 years. And I think I don't, that's not subjective. That's objectively only the second time in 40 years on war. If, if if we're still a long ways away from that happening, but if, if if that were the way this season goes, it's a pretty spectacular year. Even if it doesn't end with a national championship, 13 and one with a cotton ball win. And maybe you're ranked, third or fourth in the country in the final polls. Again, I, you know, I don't want to be loser mentality or anything, but those types of years have not happened very often in the last four decades. Jeremy put in his another super chat, by the way. Whoa, Jeremy. So as you were talking, I'm like, well, just finish up Casca. Jeremy, Jeremy put in another one. Okay, guys, we've won one national championship in our lifetimes Texas fans need to quit acting like we win titles all the time and be happy when we do remember strong and Herman years. Well, Jeremy, I hope that last little thing I was talking about, I hope that was right up your alley. Cause I'm like you, I'm, I'm telling you, this isn't insignificant that this program has either done one or the other, but it's never really been able to do both things in the same year other than the national championship season that we're even having this conversation speaks, I think, uh, to the quality of, uh, of of what's been a really special year so far. Yeah, I would definitely, you know, think so. You know, it's, it's, I mean, it's 11 and one. All right. And every, you know, most people were at a nine, 10 win prediction. They've, you know, they've gotten, they've got 11 as far as the regular season is concerned. Like, so we, we know what this looks like. You know, this will be a season that you can go a little look back and you say, you know what? When you do that thing after the, after the season catch, where you're like, you know, if this would have happened and this would have happened, well, there'll, there's only going to be one if at this moment. Is this going to be, man, we just hold on, hold serve against OU and who knows what could have happened. So I, I think people will look back on the season a lot more fondly and, 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 and with a lot of great memories of it. But like you said, if, if they go out and finish the job, yeah, 100%, uh, you know, I agree with that. Uh, Thomas has a question. He wants to know what's the most likely path for UT uh, to the CFP? I, I think I have the answer, but you tell me what you think, Catch. Florida State needs to lose and then just root for Georgia all the way through, yeah. and the road literally opens itself up in a way that Texas can't be left out. Correct. So at that point, at, at that point, if Alabama beats Georgia, it, it creates Thomas. Uh, Th- it creates chaos, Thomas. You don't want all that. You just want Georgia to handle their business. They're in. You get the the Pac uh, twelve winner in there. Uh, the, that that team is in. You get the Big Ten winner in. That team is in. And then you get Texas with their dub, and they're in. So, but you just need FSU to lose. So one hundred percent with that. So it's just that simple. Yes. Root for Florida tomorrow. Yeah, and let George. If Georgia's emerge as they're the number one, like true number one team in the country, then let hey prove it, guys. You guys go be number one. Florida State's got to lose one of the last two. It's kind of as simple as that. Um, how much? <laughs> how much? <laughs> Uh, hey, our guy Ryan Crow from Texas Card House gave us two hundo earlier. Damn. So it's been a profitable post game show so far tonight, Mister Richardson. I, I I like it. How much longer do you want to go? You've been going all for a while. Well, let's see. We started at six fifteen, and it's twelve eighteen. I I still have a post game article that I need to write, 
and Liverpool and Man City play in six hours and 12 minutes. All right. So while we, while we do some final thoughts, <laughs> how we're, about that? Are, uh, are, are we good on super chats? I think we're all, I think we're all caught up. Yeah. 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 Let's do uh give me a party. Give me your final thoughts. Um, you know, I think if, you know, catch you, the, this thing over the last couple of years, the final game in the regular season has been pretty anticlimactic for, for Sarkeesian. Year one, it was definitely nothing to write home about. Uh, year two, not as much as well. Um, and then we have what happens here in, in year three, uh, the building process of it. And, you know, catch the, this is this has been, yeah, I'll be honest, it's just been fun to watch. It's been fun to cover. Um it's been fantastic, you know, to be quite honest with you. I'm, I'm happy for Texas fans. You know, I, I have felt bad for Texas fans throughout the years. Just feeling like, damn, so loyal, traveling all across the country, and you're just not getting an, enough in return. That ROI is not good. So, uh, you know, happy to see it. This is a game that when you go in the weeds, it's, it's, it's interesting because uh, – you know, from there's some offensive standouts, and yeah, catch. We'll have to do some more talking next week. We'll have to talk with Jaden Blue, uh, and what the hell that looks like. I mean, Jaden Blue, Savion Red, those guys were pretty effective. Uh, but that were in there. Quinn has a you know, has an okay game, but that's all they needed at that point. Defense is fantastic. Oh man, this is this to me. If you as a Longhorn fan, man, this is you enjoy this weekend, you enjoy your Friday night. You have some drinks. Uh, you enjoy just sitting back and, and kicking up your feet, watching what happens on Saturday, and seeing you know what who seeing who you get to play, which is a, a fantastic thing. And then heading to Arlington next week, catch when you and I will be doing a post game show. Um, the only the second Big Twelve championship game post game show that you and I have done catch since we've been doing post game shows for almost ten years. So yeah, man, it's a it's a good it's a good day, as Ice Cube would say. Today's a good day. I um, uh, I'll echo exactly what you said and just take it a couple of steps further and just say, guys, enjoy these games. Enjoy tonight. Enjoy tomorrow. Enjoy the next week. Enjoy next Saturday. Um, it's been a long. I mean, Onwar. It's been a long last. I, it's. I, I almost can't remember before Onwar. I mean, Onwar has now been with Orange Bloods almost a decade now. Uh, I. I do think this is technically season number ten, and right, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3. This is his tenth season. Damn. Yeah, and. <laughs> we, you know it should be fun we should you, a lot of you guys have been with us from the very beginning and a guy like adam lowey right he's been this is his post game show but like he's been with us i think for nine of these seasons eight of these seasons and they haven't always been fun no. sometimes look i can remember i can remember two years ago doing post game shows where we were worried about like our Orange Bloods athletes doing shows the following weeks because you guys were going to yell at them for like having the audacity to do a Jake Major show after a six straight loss. Yes. So in two years to be in this position, this is what you guys talk about all the time, being in this position. So now that you're here, don't, don't forget to smell the roses. And Jeremy's right. Job's not done. But smell the roses the entire way through. There are no guarantees next year. There are no guarantees in 2025. Who knows? But in 2023, a special season is literally in your lap. Smell the roses. Really enjoy it. Uh, and appreciate it in real time. And that includes for the rest of this season, all the way through the bowl games and everything that happens beyond next Saturday. But um, we've had a lot of fun. Just tonight's been a lot of fun. And I want to make sure that you guys uh, remember that. Jeremy, Jeremy, it's okay. Jeremy says 
Not trying to be a Debbie Downer. Love this season. I love this team. Win the Big 12 in our last year uh, here, and I'm ecstatic. We're with you, baby. We're with you. By the way, just a couple more Super Chats, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, Tom G says, party time. Yeah. This is live in seven days. See you in Dallas. Yep. We got the suite, so we'll, we, we will be having – a blast. He wants you to know that, Anwar. Yeah, well, I told him, I told everybody, look, and, and I think I, I think it was, I think it was South End Zone Queen, I think, recommended it or something. And I was like, what we got to do? We all, we all got to get together for a happy hour on Friday because Tom G was like, oh, we should get together for dinner. I'm like, no, we got to do a happy hour. I like can't, can't sit around and do dinner. We're all being there. So uh, we came with Texas Live. So we're just going to just show up. I'm not going to try to organize anything. I'm not going to try to get... Oh, give us a section or anything. We'll just show the hell up. We'll just get there at like five or so, six o'clock, and we're just going to take over and have a good time. By the way, Ryan Crow will end it on the super chat for four ninety nine, saying Chelsea three, Newcastle one, Florida twenty seven, Florida State twenty one. Hey, from from your keyboard to the football gods and the soccer gods' ears. Mm. Uh, we will abs and all any God you want to pray to that can make that happen tomorrow. Not so much the former, but definitely the latter. Again, Ryan, we absolutely love you. Thank you for your support, continued support, uh, basically a decade strong with Orange Bloods as well. You deserve yeah. after a year of war or 10 years of war room sponsorships to <laughs> for it to be a Big 12 championship level team. Uh, oh, yeah. All right, guys. Hell yeah. We're going to say goodbye. Hit that like button. One step closer to a Big 12 championship. We'll bow out when more than a 1,000 watching live. We really do appreciate you guys as we have all season. The road goes on. Next weekend, though, through Arlington, Texas v. Somebody will be yeah. there. Watch along. Post game show. On war. On site. All the stuff over at orangebloods.com. Mm -hmm. Have a good rest of the night. Oscar, six street, six street, six street. Make sure you take identification with you. Uh, for Anwar, Jason, Blake, you guys have a fantastic rest of the night. We'll see you.